today I'm going to be playing with this, well, with Evolutionary Apex and a new-ish thing. Get to that in just a moment, though. So, <laughs> so I recently learned that, well, basically, if you play Apex with Minvor and Decimus in hand, unlike how Apex or Death Knell and those usually work, um, Instead of them being summoned in a random order, they just actually get summoned at the same time. And, to make it even better, Decimus's ability procs off of the cards Minvor burns. So if you play Apex with Minvor and Decimus in hand, and, uh, you know, three other creatures, that's 24 out of hand damage. It's a little silly. <clears throat> so, yeah. So I've been working out a few variations. Um, and the deck's been a little bit ridiculous. I, I have a funny feeling that this is probably a bug that's going to get fixed. But in the meantime, I think we have a very, very high tier deck on our hands here. Because it's just... You can basically just play fairly normal uh, mid rangey or apex deck that's already pretty solid, and then just randomly win games at seven mana surprisingly consistently. So it's a little silly, and we'll get into it shortly here. Uh, I'm just trying to get all of my uh, troubleshooting stuff out of the way. Oh, good deal, good deal. <coughs> So this is my, I'm not quite sure what's the best bearing yet, but although this is certainly my favorite. So this is the sort of like traditional Apex, you know, run Grandmaster Krygon and like big bodies to make Apex worthwhile. And then I'm running Abjicator alongside that just to um, speed up the Apexes normally with the other variations of the deck. You know, trying to speed up Apex isn't worth it because you want to, have time to get that three card combo. But here, even outside of the combo, Apex can still be pretty devastating. Um, mix that with A, your Apex, so you want to be mostly creatures. B, for the combo to work, you really also want to be mostly creatures. So, you know, you know, we'll run Sunset Paragon instead of Plasma or Rebuke and stuff like that. Um, and then Aether Masters goes a long way for consistency. So the next version is... Uh, less apex based and instead has some more toolboxy stuff with some golem synergy. You know, extra ramp with golem, golem, golems, extra AOE, uh, just good, good stuff all around. Then we have the let's skip the golems and just go sort of dedicated toolbox, complete with healing and dispel and that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, you still have dispel and golem form, but it does skimp on the healing a little bit there. And then alternatively, you can just run pretty much the normal, uh, like, mid-range, anti-draw, Vindicator, Spikes, uh, Haru, Decimus deck, which is already a top-tier deck, and then just toss that in there instead of, like, Plasma Storm and a Flash and just be able to high-roll people to death like crazy. Um, this, you know, this one has a lot of potential, as, but it is, I don't know. I'm less interested in playing it just because it's, you know, just a slight modification to an already great deck. But, you know, this, all of these have their own potential, but I'm definitely sort of leaning towards this guy because it can do the quick Apexes plus isn't uh, reliant on the combo with Apex. Or, of course, you know, uh, this one as well because it's just a strong deck that just might be stronger now. And then I, of course, have a couple uh, mech variants. You know, this one is just, like, making the combo really consistent thanks to Replicant, Seismoid, Blazehound, um, 
so you know lots of digging power and then you know instead of the mid-range or toolbox or golem package you've got mechasaur as your backup plan and then this one's a little bit more gimmicky but if you just really really want to consistently 100 percent win on seven mana this one does that thanks to q and friends but this one's a bit gimmicky because surviving to seven with this version is tough <clears throat> um, this one is similarly consistent but mechs are not that great they're decent like they're, they're okay but i've definitely been having the most fun with this one like yeah all right anyway so let's uh let's go ahead and hop in game let's see if i can push myself back into top 10 here i'm pretty close to it <clears throat> but yeah deck is definitely a bit ridiculous Apex, that's a good deal. It is a bit early for EMP, and Paragon's not great in this matchup. <coughs> Abjicator Apex, always a good deal. Of course, we do still need to be trying to find the rest of our combo, but we still have plenty of time. And again, a single Grandmaster Krygon can make the Apex worth it as well. Warp Up. Oh, it's a Wander Rag. Makes sense. <coughs> Don't need this healing right now. Oh, well, I mean, we've got the nice uh, you know, mid-range thing going here. I think I am going to go ahead and open with the abjicator. Just get that apex going early. Let's see. So I can come down here and be able to clear the warp up. Yeah, I think that's my best bet, just... Put it down here so I can deal with the war pup if I need to. So, but all right. Well, we have our Grandmaster Krog on, so yeah, even if we don't get to do what the deck is built to do and just horribly murder someone at seven. Uh, oh, another fun fact about Apex versus Trial decks: um, if if you play Apex and a trial isn't completed, it won't summon the Mithron. But if their trial is completed and you play Apex, it will summon the Mithron, and I'm pretty sure they don't get their uh, get their trial. So <clears throat> gonna probably find that out this match. But uh, anyway, okay, raid winner can go. Hmm, I have some choices to make here. Do I want to clear an egg or do I want to clear the war pup? Frenzy on that is definitely annoying. However, if I <clears throat> think and I may actually want to clear that warp up just because force field makes abdicage three attack pointless. So Alright, let's do that. So we'll globe deny here. Uh oh. Get in some lag, that's really bad. Why is this happening? There we go. Alright, clear that before it's force field causes any more problems. And then bring the abdicator uh, outside of like potential flash encounter or something silly like that, but where it can still clean up the slither if need be. <clears throat> and looking good. Alright, so we've got. Super, super early Krygon, and the EMP is not a bad body either. Ideally, I would much prefer to find the uh, actual instant kill combo, but in this match... Oh, he's just quitting. Well, that's a shame. Yeah. I, was, I wanted to find out for sure about the Apex Wanderer matchup. It's not working. Or is it just quiet right now? I think we're just quiet at the moment. <clears throat> Alright, well, what do you want to bet? It's a mirror matchup. This deck's catching on like fire real fast. Of course, everybody else has their own uh, mixes of it. Alright, well, we've already got 
good stuff going on here. Okay, so I'm probably going to open. Well, I'm going to replace the EMP, as it's a bit early for that. I don't know, just Krygons definitely work. Uh, but let's see. Aether Master down. Uh, hmm. Tricky. That's for sure. Yeah, middle or just can go. Okay. Oh, good stuff. Now, if we get Apex, we'll just win anyways. All right. People are spectating. Let's get them where they should be. So it was like clot on somebody. Okay. And somebody else. But I didn't catch who the other person was. <coughs> So, would be certainly be a bit interesting if we just had a draw because he got his apex off first. But you know, I think my grandmaster's force field can help uh, keep me in the game. Like if he plays his apex, I think I will have a leg up there. Ooh, I've got. Ooh, I've even got my accelerator. All right, I've got everything I need now. Oh, I just need to do some globe contesting here, <clears throat> and I could potentially go off next turn. Unlikely, but possible. He's dumping his hand awfully hard, though. He may not. It may not be a mirror matchup, which is good because that means I should like pretty much for sure get the win <clears throat> once I make it. I could even just play Abjucator this next turn and then just go off even sooner here. I may do that. Yeah, it's looking like even if he is a mirror matchup, it's not looking like he can actually you know stop me from what I'm doing here. So yeah, it looks like we're just going to go for the five-mana combo. Let's get our hand nice and topped off. Uh-oh, more lag. And if he doesn't kill us this turn, uh, we very likely win next turn. So let's go ahead and clear this body block and pray we live through the turn. As long as we live through this turn, uh, we will more than likely just win here. <clears throat> So, all right, well, we just got to live through this turn, and it should be game over. Just that ultra early apex there. <clears throat> and you are about to see what this deck is all about here. It is a bit ridiculous, because that's 24 out of hand damage right now. Plus, oh wait, no, more than that. That's way more. That's that's like 50 out of hand damage right now because of the double min four. And it'll deck them out, and it'll have crygons. Not that they're going to matter this time, but they could have. I just need five open spaces around me, and ideally you try not to stand next to your opponent, because they can occasionally overwrite your spaces. <clears throat> but yeah, I think we are about to just win. So let's go ahead and run away and do what this deck is all about. <clears throat> oh, watch this. Watch this nonsense. Blam, blam. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so, this deck's gone. 
<coughs> so yeah, that's what this deck does. And it's really, really broken. Both, uh, in both senses of the word. It is probably literally a bug and therefore broken. It is also broken in the sense of, I'm pretty sure this is a little bit overpowered here. Because that was a little bit ridiculous. Now, given there is some counterplay of the deck, like surrounding your opponent or cornering them is valid. If they don't have enough spaces to summon stuff, they get messed up. And also, then there's the other factor of, <clears throat> um, you know, you can't just aggro people down, too. All right, all right, so we're... <laughs> so, I mean, I, I did, like, more like 50 damage that, that turn, plus he had zero cards in deck. Plus, I had two Grandmasters down. There was, I mean, poor bastard. Alright, so we don't need two Decimus, and we don't need an EMP this early. We are only a Minvor short of... Oh, I guess we just win at seven mana again. <clears throat> there we go. Survive till seven. GG. And we're even player two, so good stuff. And it's Wanderer Rag, so it's not likely he's going to burst us down super early. If I were lucky, we'll find another Abjucator again. Alright, he's got that, so there's the chance of... Given it is Wanderer, so it's considerably less likely for him to get that turn to Lava well, Slasher, but I'm not going to take any risks. <clears throat> we aren't sure. Nobody is sure yet. Um, here's, here's where I've been going over my decks and talking about it, so... Uh, this is some random guy's thread that I just sort of hijacked it and started posting my updates to the deck and my thoughts so far. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but it's, it's pretty dumb, because, yeah, no, we, we win on 7-man unless he manages to surround us or kill us before then. So let's see here. Uh, I'm going to play it here. This way it is safe from a Lava Lasher, but if I need to, I can just trade, because I want to clear what he's got here. Yeah, I, I'm not confident if, I mean, <clears throat> A, I'm not sure if Burn counts for Decimus in the first place. Second of all, uh, Mimvor ignores Apex's random summoning order. Third of all, Decimus also ignores Apex's random summoning order, and then they just piggyback off of each other. There are like three or four like sketchy, inconsistent things going on here. <clears throat> now, given, um, even if they fixed the Decimus part of the deck, uh, the deck would be considerably more balanced, but I would still probably just play this deck as is, because Minvor is just deleting your opponent's deck combined with, you know, Krygons and the like, is still pretty powerful. It won't be this, like, god-tier, zero, overpowered nonsense that it is now, but it will still be a good deck, even if they fix the Mimvor Decimus interaction. Um, unfortunately, what they're most likely to do is reinforce the random summoning order of Apex, and that's just the worst thing they could do, but it would largely solve the problem. Anyway, all right, so Harold can go. Uh, but yeah, we're just needing to focus on surviving, so let's go ahead and may as well trade here and get the heal off. Now the question is, do I trade in my Metallurgist or not? If I pull him back, we could potentially get that early EMP. Um, of course, I do want to deal with this Primus before he makes it to six mana, though. So we'll see here. I think I do want to pull my metallurgist back, but I'm going to put it, I'm put it like here. That way, it can still. Now here is safe, and it can move forward if need be. <coughs> yeah, we find an abj. Okay, there's that lava slasher. Given we don't need an extra, but we do want to get our hand nice and filled up. And just just provoke alone is another decent counterplay counter to the deck. Like, it is counterable, but I think it is a little bit too strong and questionable whether it's intentional or not. But right now, we just need to survive till 7 and not get completely surrounded. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. 
He is trying to get his early wanderer out. Yeah. All right, I think I'm going to toss my EMP. That's what I really want to find. This globe, deny. <clears throat> oh, I mean, I still dislike Mantra more than I like dislike this deck because this deck actually does have counterplay. Still, it is probably overpowered and questionable. Questionable whether it's intentional or not. All right, so let's see. Let's draw a card because we're going to do that no matter what. Well, that will help next turn. That'll get us out of a, a bad bind next turn. That'll clear out his Wanderer for us. So we can also uh, clear this out. <clears throat> so next turn, we can clean up his field. And then after that, we can do our Wombo. Paragon's pretty solid. Like, it's Diet Rebuke, but it leaves a body, so, like, well, I mean, it's Diet Rebuke, and it leaves a body for one more man. But most Those importantly, uh, most importantly, what it does is keeps our combo fully functional here. Be able to just clean up his field real nice. <clears throat> Given we do need to do a point of damage here. So let's move this out of the way over here. And then let's pop up here. And let's clean this up. Very nice, very nice. And then play around McCanter a little bit here. And we just need to do a point of damage here. I'm not going to replace anything right now because this is all decent, and most importantly, I don't want to risk getting it. Well, no, there's only a pick. This, this version of the deck really can't break, so I'm going to go ahead and look for, look for like another McCant, look for a McCanter or something like that. There's only one damage off of just killing him. If we find another Decimus, if we find another Mendor, if we find a Mechanter, all of that will do what we need it to do. <clears throat> but it's okay. Having him one health off of dead, that also works. Oh, well, he just killed himself for us. Thank you, Mr. Fuzzy Wuzzy. It was much appreciated. GG. And here we go again with this ridiculousness. Wham! And he's dead. 24 damage. <clears throat> this is this is absolutely ridiculous. Oh yeah, I mean I I have never said that, you know, like Mantra is a low skill deck, because you really gotta know how to pilot it. It's not something you can just pick up and play instantly. You know, you gotta get your you gotta get your practice games in with and you gotta know how to hand management and not blow all your resources. I've never said that, you know, Spell High in any form is a low skill deck. I've just always said that it is, doesn't belong in the game because it is, you know, while it's a high skill cap, it is entirely on the executing player's side and nothing to do with the opponent. Um, yeah, sorry, Mr. Fuzzy. The deck is absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> Absolutely ridiculous, but thanks for stopping by, Mr. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Um, no, and I, I've been working on optimizing this list, and I'm really enjoying my current version of it. All right, well, so <clears throat> Mimbor's off to a good start. That'll be our opening play to help with additional digging. Hmm. May replace the McCanter just because digging is a big deal. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, trial bit. Hmm. 
It's a shame to replace Picanter, but this isn't a, you know, he's barely going to play any creatures. So it's, oop, all right, two out of the three. They're almost there. Let's go ahead, get you down. Huh. I think I actually am just going to replace the other Aether Master at this point. Well, then again, Abjicator could go, because we are we are player two. So, we're player two. We, we can do without the Abjicator. And EMP's good in this matchup. <clears throat> All right, well, Dragon. Of course, we need the Apex for most of these to be useful. Oh, there's that Dragon Lark. We're going to get that early Neuro. Yeah. Well... Can we find our apex in time? Well, Kragon can go, because if we get our if we get our apex now, we've got... You know, Kragon is sort of our backup for when we can't find these. Uh, we've already got an instant win out of hand. <clears throat> if we can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so... I just need to be globe contesting. Yeah, because if I can get myself two globes, that's game over. <coughs> Not quite, because I will be. If I play another card, I won't have the. I won't be able to just straight up kill him. And he's going to take one of these globes, and he's going to play his his trial. So I need to body block this globe. And we don't need to just straight up kill him out of hand. That's okay. So we'll go ahead and short ourselves on a card here to guarantee we just get this off super early here. <clears throat> and in fact, I am going to come get that point of damage in now and work on breaking his artifact. Oh, all right, we got a second Decimus. All right, <clears throat> so as long as we get two globes this turn, uh, we win. Well, I mean, you do need... <laughs> Sorry, Jildmar. No, the deck is ridiculously strong. Yep, there's the trial. But that's his whole turn, and we knew he would do that, and he's left us the two gloves we need to win. And he probably doesn't have any creatures in hand either, so let's clear this, and let's just go ahead and win! And there we go. And that should do the trick. <coughs> oh boy. What a nonsense deck. And I have quite a few, other few variations, but this is definitely my favorite. Just, you know, the ability to not be reliant on the combo and just play old school Apex, plus having just a, you know, strong mid-range kit in general prepared for most things is a good deal. Or you can go even more well-rounded, less Apex. Um, well, okay, go, go more, you know, do less Apex, more Golems, or less Golems, more well-rounded, or just play the normal Starhorn deck with another way to win. But I'm definitely enjoying this one as a very consistent way to win with good backup plans. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we can break top 10 with this abomination here. All right. Uh, sunset Paragons aren't... Well, if he is Wanderer, I may want a Paragon. Mm. 
more than I do a McCanter. Well, no. McCanter, mm. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to keep a Paragon just to kill the Wanderer itself. Because he's got player two. Alright, we've got two out of three cards we need now. Um, I am going to need that Abjucator. I don't want to replace the Paragon, but we got to dig for our last piece. Okay, he's not Wanderer anyways. <clears throat> Alright, Krygon can go because we've already got the... If we find an Apex... Anyway, Krygon is, you know, a backup to these for... But we need Apex to make any of these useful right now. Alright, so it looks like... I'm just gonna come over here and Globe Deny. Call that a turn. Not terribly productive, but not, not awful either. Um, uh, that's another reason I'm running Crygons. Crygons, actually, the force field on Crygons tilt the mirror in your favor. Plus, uh, I'm also, yeah, no, I, I, I've done quite a few tinkers with the deck, but yeah, the mirror matchup is certainly a bit awkward. All right, come on, we're one card short here. Alright, well, let's see here. I don't want to play into Thunderhorn, so it looks like I'm just going to sort of pull back and go into Globe Contest mode here. Because <clears throat> we're just stolen right now. Uh, do I want to hold on to that Abjicator more than I do the Metallurgist? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for now. <laughs> more mythos. Uh, come on, Apex. Of course, early EMPs work well too. It's probably a few more mythos than we need. Order them all. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to go for early EMP to get some work done. I'm going to toss back one of these mythos. Three is just. A little bit of overkill here. Uh, and at this point, we don't really need the abjicator. <laughs> Triple Mimbor. I mean, two is already enough to completely deck out your opponent. Alright, so yeah, it looks like we're going to go for that EMP, which is solid. But, and I don't have the mana to play the Aether Master. So yeah, no. EMP it is. And, alright, just. Let's go an EMP right in his face here. And then keep just pulling back into globe contest mode. May as well trade with this, otherwise it'll just trade to the Thunderhorn uh, free there. So, and yep, yeah, I'm just stolen at this point. Well, Paragon's never bad. I may not even need to combo this game, like just playing mid-range is effective enough. And at this point I can get rid of a Mimbor as well. Um, alternatively, I could just end up playing a Mimbor normally. Like, it's not bad on its own. Like, if you stick a Mimbor and then play Decimus the next turn, it's pretty solid as it is. So maybe I, yeah, I'll replace the back of Aether Master at this point, and I may just end up actually playing a Mimbor... Solid here. It's looking more likely that I'm going to do a Paragon turn here if I can reach where I need to go. Actually, it's not that great a Paragon turn. Well, I don't know. How bad do I want to kill Mortar Maw? I suppose a Lava Lasher does the job too. But yeah, this Aether can go for sure. Hmm. Alright, well, let's see here. Options, options, options. Uh, yeah, I think Slasher's solid. I could alternatively set myself up uh, a Mimbor, which, you know, Mimbor followed by Decimus and uh, something else. That's 12 damage. But I'm not in a rush to kill him right now. So, yeah, I think let's just deal with that Mortar Maw before it causes any issues here. <clears throat> 
Mm, yep, yeah, I think let's start moving this gap forward. Yep, all right, so we're just stalling, and we will be able to just... We've got options. We have options. Oh, he... Oh, wait, is this a mirror matchup, or did I just win? Oh, he didn't know. He didn't know. He was playing normal Apex. Well, thank you, Glass Knuckle, for doing my job for... Oh, that poor guy. Oh, he didn't know. <laughs> oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Poor guy. <laughs> Did you just start what? Uh, <laughs> well, this is what you started watching. So <laughs> I'll break it down for you, for the folks that don't quite understand it again real fast. So, all right. <laughs> uh, all right. So basically, so Memvor... As effect is when you summon something, your opponent burns three cards. Apparently, burn three cards procs Decimus, all right? And we can make this even worse. If you Apex a Decimus, uh, <laughs> Decimus and Mimvor ignore the random summoning order of Apex and just proc off each other at the same time. So, for example, if you have a... Apex, Memvor, and Decimus in hand with three other creatures, that is 24 out of hand damage. Plus, most of your opponent's deck is gone. It's a little silly. So then I've taken it a few steps farther to optimize it a little bit more. Uh, basically, is this banned in tournaments? As far as I know, it wasn't. As far as I know, it wasn't banned in tournaments. Because as far as we know at the moment, it's okay, but no, there is a good chance it is a bugged interaction. We're not sure yet, though. Like, as I said, um, you know, this is sketchy, this is sketchy, this is, there are three somewhat sketchy parts. Oh, did the poor guy just message me? Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, poor guy. Uh, GG. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm just gonna ooch my way into top 10 with it, and then maybe we'll go to unranked and do something else. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, TM. What, what tournaments does he do? Like, he does... Announcements. <laughs> well, yeah. at least Glass Knuckles being a good sport. Alright, uh, where? Okay, so this is Duelist Official. Um, well, I don't know where to. Where I would look that up. Oh, I mean, I talk to everybody. And I frequently get on Everhard for his attitude sometimes. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's a nice guy if you can get past his sense of humor. Uh, and I, I frequently have to be like, dude, like, you need to dial it back, or we're not, this is not okay. But, you know, I, I, I'm tolerant of people as much as I can be. Like, the only things I don't tolerate are, like, people being just downright mean, or, like, blatant ignorance to the 
level it's painful. <clears throat> no, like, things I don't tolerate are people that are, like, mean and nasty, uh, and, you know, just, like, ignorance to the point of pain, uh, not, not just ignorance, but, like, intentional ignorance, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, no. Just because somebody has a really, really terrible sense of humor and is sort of, sort of like a, a dick, but isn't like mean. He just, he's just got a really poor sense of humor and is a little bit crude. You know, that's, it's a reason not to hang out with someone a whole lot, but it's not a reason to just write them off completely. Anyway, so back on topic. All right, let's see if we could boot our way back into top ten with this abomination. I would certainly like, if anybody can find a source on where this is banned, I'd be happy to see that. <clears throat> uh, no, I didn't just cheat my way to top ten. I've already been in top ten a couple times this season without playing a deck like this. Uh, I got there with my my wall fay list. I got there with my... Uh, bath list, and well, I'm about to get there with this. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, if we can't find Menvor, I'm gonna hold on to that Krygon. If we do find a Menvor, then, ooh, that's tricky. Alright, well, we know for sure. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna play this. Um, hmm. Tricky. Do I dig for the third part of the combo? Do I hold on to the guarantee? Hmm. I think let's dig for the gear, the third part of the combo. It's not hard to find. Now, as far as we know, this is still still legal, and I would love to even find a find a source it for if it's been banned in tournament play. Um, yeah, no, it is a little ridiculous, and it's possible it's working as intended. Okay, well, I, uh, it, right, so let's see here. Oh, I'm not talking about ladder, I, I'm talking about tournaments. <coughs> well, I mean, as long as eight gates and mantra exist intentionally, I have no, no qualms about this. All right, anyway, so yeah, I think I am going to replace the Krygon. Oh, there we go. Alright, GG. He's got a couple turns to kill us. But no, the deck is definitely overpowered and a little ridiculous, and I don't think... Because it's really hard to surround somebody. Like, you know, for the same reason I like to hate on Mantra and uh, Eight Gates, it's the same reason I always disliked, you know, Desi Spikes and now this, but I am slightly less judgmental of this and Desi Spikes, because unlike... Uh, the former decks, these do actually have counterplay. Like, Desi Spikes, you can punish your opponent for feeding you cards. You can, if you get them low on health... Ah, thanks, Moosin. Much appreciated. If you get them low on health, they just actually can't do their combo. Um, and, you know, this one, if you surround them or corner them... If you surround them or corner them... Then... You know, this deck doesn't work. Anyway, Alright, so we don't need that many Menvars. He's played around Lava Lasher, which I expected starkly. No, and um, because the deck is a little bit sketchy, I certainly don't blame them um, blame them banning it. Like, it is... Its legality is definitely a bit questionable. So it looks like we're just globe contesting right now, so let's play around... Jux? Well, hmm. no, we can't play around Jux and protect the Rage Binder's egg. So, we'll just throw this back here defensively to Globe Contest. Yeah, no, I don't intend to play this real long term. I was just having fun optimizing. Oh. Dang it, Moosin. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, nah, like... I just wanted to optimize the list because it's a pretty neat interaction, and God, is it strong. So I'm just ooching my way back into top ten with it, and I'll probably retire it since 
it's a little silly right now. Let's move you forward just a titch here. Out of range of Reba, but slowly closing in. All right, Krygon can definitely go. Well, there's the tiny, tiny chance he leaves us all three globes and just loses, but I don't think that would happen. Starkly wouldn't let that happen. You know, he's Starkly is a good uh, player. He's already playing around the... Well, I mean, there is an argument. Like, you you can argue that it is an unintended glitch. And if it is an unintended glitch, then that means it really shouldn't be seeing play. But um, it appears that that is just not how Duelist likes to run things. So apparently you can just run whatever you want on ladder. But, yeah, that's fine. You know, if it's a problem, that, well, I mean, yeah, I think the deck is a bit of a problem, but it's a little bit ridiculous. It really is. Um, so, you know, that they should do something about it in the not-too-distant future here. And if they don't, then I guess it is just working as intended, which it very well may be. He's just doing his best to globe deny, just small ifs, which is smart. Alright, so do I... Alright, so I think we... Okay, Grand Master can go for sure. Mm -hmm. Look at that moment, though. Alright, so... In clear... Can clear both things... All right, so yeah, we'll do it this way. So we need to um, clear the fox by giving him only one Phoenix Fire, and then we'll go ahead trade this in. No, DDoSI was clearly unintended. Like that—that that was just a whole different kind of beast. That I that deck should have been like ban worthy for playing. That was just not okay. Um, but yeah, this deck is definitely overpowered and does need to be addressed very quickly. We just need to... Oh, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree there. Um, just need to survive a little bit longer here. All right, if you can go, as we no longer require digging power. So I could just heal up. I could also just play... Uh, could play a Decimus, but not really worth it. This, having double Decimus means he just dies for sure, even if he's at full health. Given, um, yeah, all right, so. Ooh, ah, uh, very nice, very nice. All right, so that'll probably just be game next turn. <coughs> and there we go. Yeah, well, we're not sure if it's a bug, though. Like, um, the Memvor Decimus interaction could be 100% legit, and um, I've always thought that Apex's random summoning order was sketchy. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've just been taking my hand at optimizing it. It's got, like, a 95% win rate right now. It's really, really dumb really overpowered and very possibly bugged, but we're not sure. It might be completely legit and just overpowered. All right, so let's just take a step back here and win. And there we go.
still do it. Jeez. Yeah, it is not making it easy to get into top 10 here. I've won like four in a row, and I'm still stuck at rank 12. Um, I do, uh, because because if it if they wanted it to be remove and not burn, burn has always been what happens when you overdraw. Well, eyesight, you know, Q, if they didn't intend it to work this way, it would be worded as remove, like Q is. And Q doesn't work this way with decimus. If they intended it to be remove and not burn, and burn has always been when you overdraw, you were draw a card, um, you know, if this wasn't intended this way, I would sure think he would just read remove three cards from your opponent's deck, not burn. I do believe burn is working as intended. Now, maybe not, but yes, the apex problem is is another issue here. Um, and not, not even just death now. Like, Apex itself. Like, Apex does also, like, because um, there's another issue I have. Like, I used to run Apex Max, and because of Apex's random summoning order, uh, after the Metal Tooth nerf, we found, we ran into something weird. Um, Pre-Metal Tooth nerf, it didn't matter. But post-Metal Tooth nerf, because of Apex's random summoning, you have to uh, summon silver before... You have to summon a mech before metal tooth, before silver. Or so, so with the randomness, it has to be silver needs to come down before metal tooth, or metal tooth can't be the last thing summoned. And I would noticed Apex does indeed summon in a random order, because occasionally, you know, I would do my Apex metal tooth silver combo... And no one would get Rush, because Metal Tooth was the last one summoned. So it's not even just that, you know, Death Nail summons randomly. We actually know that Apex at least used to summon randomly. Now, personally, I've always thought the random summoning thing was dumb. Like, I don't think that's how it should work in the first place. They should all be summoned at the same time. There shouldn't be a random 